All right, what we're going to do today is find the volume of some solids, and it's going to be kind of difficult um, for you because you're not going to see the, the uh, things I bring to class, but um, hopefully you can follow me. And I want to do this warm-up, and it's going to kind of seem like, okay, why are we doing this? But I promise it'll, it'll make the problems once we get there a little bit easier. So here's what I want. I want the you to write the area of a square with side s. Now, don't make that one harder than it is. If you're like, okay, the area of that, if I said, what's the area of that square, square, you would say, well, I would just do x squared. Okay, so that's not too hard. Um, let's look about an area of a semicircle with the base s. Now, let's think about what you know. You would say that the, if I asked you the area of a circle, what would you say? You'd say pi r squared. Well, if it's a semicircle, then it's one half pi r squared. But I said in terms of base s. So what do you know? You know that the, this, of course, is the radius. So would you agree that radius is one half of the s there? So let me plug that in. I would have area is equal to one half pi, and let me plug in this one half s right here for r. And if I clean that up, what would that be? Well, remember when you square something, you square both the top and bottom of the numbers and the letters. So I'd have one fourth times one eighth, excuse me, one fourth times one half, which would be one eighth times pi, so that's pi over 8 s squared. Very good. Now again, right now you're going, okay, why are we doing this? Just stick with me. Let's keep going. Let's do the area of a triangle. I'm actually going to do the one on the right first, because if I said what's the area of a triangle, you'd say area is equal to 1 half base times height, correct? So in this case, you'd say, well, then the area is one half. The base is S. Well, if this is an isosceles right triangle with a leg of S, that means these two things are actually equal. So this would also be S. So I would get area equals one half S squared. All right. Let's do this equilateral one. That's going to take a little more. Let's start it the same way. Area equals one half base times height. Now, what do we know so far? Well, we have one half. The base is S. Now, let's talk about the height. Here's my where my geometry people are going to kind of kick in. That would be the height of that triangle, correct, with the base S. Well, what do you know? If it's equilateral, then that angle is 60 degrees. So I have a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Okay. Well, let's see what we remember about a 30, 60, 90 triangle. If I call this A, do you remember what the relationship is between I'm going to do it over here. 30, 60, 90 triangle, if this is 60 and this is 30, and I call this A, do you remember what the relationships were? This guy was 2A, and this was square root of 3A, remember? So this height is square root of 3 times A. Do you agree with that? And do we also know that A, it's going to be 1 half S. So h is square root of 3 times 1 half s, or in other words, square root of 3 over 2s. And if I multiply all that, I get square root of 3 over 4s squared. Now the last two I think you'll, you'll get pretty easily. If I said you have an area of a rectangle, you know that the area of a rectangle is 
base times height or length times width, however you want to say it. So if this one says a base of S and a height of 7, well, gosh, that's pretty simple. The area is going to be 7S. Read the wording carefully on this one. The area of the rectangle with a base S and a height of one-third of its base. So that means this would be one-third S. So if I multiplied those together, I would get one-third S squared. Okay, so now that we have those, I want you to keep that next to your notes because you're going to look back at this. So when I say, hey, find the right area formula, y'all, these are the area formulas that we're going to be looking at. So let's go on to see what the actual problems look like. It says, let the base of the solid be in the first quadrant plane region bounded by that equation, the x-axis and the y-axis. Suppose that the cross-section perpendicular to the x-axis or squares. Find the volume of a solid. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. The first thing we're going to do is the first thing that we did yesterday. When we're finding area, we have to found, find our bounded region, and we still have a bounded region. So let's read again what it says and find that. In the first quadrant, bounded by 1 minus x squared over 4. So what is that going to look like? It's going to look like this the x and the y-axis, okay, so there's my bounded region. Now, what, how you know it's going to be, obviously you know we're doing these problems because it's today's notes, but on the test when they're all combined, friends, it's going to say the word cross-sections. It's going to tell you something, it's going to say that word. And it's going to tell you, they have to tell you either perpendicular to the x or to the y-axis. I want you to know that you are going to draw this thing called S, the side of, of your cross section. S is always drawn perpendicular to correct axis and through the bounded region. So if I were drawing S, I'm going to draw perpendicular to the x-axis and through my bounded region. So my S is going to be like that. Now, with cross-sections, if I drew another S, it's going to be like that. So again, if I'm drawing a lot of them, do you notice that I have a dx? I mean, just like I talked about area, when they're stacking this way, it's going to be dx. And when I'm stacking this way, it's going to be dy. So I know this is going to be a dx problem. And I know it's hard for you to, like, visualize this part, but I... And I, and I can't draw, and you know that. So here's what I need you to visualize. How this is being formed. Notice it says that the cross-sections are squares. So I want you to visualize, like me coming out of, like of the screen and making a square right here. So it's kind of coming up out of the screen at you. And then when I, as I move, it's coming, it's a little bit bigger square when I come to this one. And it, then it's a little bit bigger square coming out. So I'm making this three-dimensional shape. Well, if I looked at the cross section, the cross section is a square. Okay. And this is S. This is like the dx part right here, okay, the thickness. So if I were finding the volume of that one crop piece, would you agree that I would say, well, I would take the area of this cross section, in this case a square, and I'd multiply it by the thickness, and that would give me the volume. Okay, so what it comes down to is, when I'm doing volume, obviously I'm going to integrate, okay? What this is right here is the area of the cross-section. That gives you 
area, but then when you multiply by either dx or dy, okay, which is the thickness, that gives you the volume. And again, I'm at, that's one little square, and I'm integrating, so I'm adding up all these squares. So that's why I said, okay, let's get this area. Why, let's find out these areas so that I don't have to do that every time. If I didn't, here's what I would do. At this point, I'd say, oh, they're squares. So what's the area of the cross section? Oh, that area would be S squared. Well, won't that always be true of a square? So here's where we're at. I'm going to do the volume. The area of the cross section is S squared. I'm going to have dx. Let me go ahead and find my bounds. If I was doing this without a calculator, how would I get those bounds? Of course, let's say I can fit it in right here. 1 minus x squared over 4 needs to be 0. So I could pop that x squared uh, over 4 and then multiply by 4. So x squared would be 4. So x is plus or minus 2. Obviously, in my picture, this is 0 and 2, and that's what goes there. So when I show you the steps, I say, okay, figure out the right area formula. That's this. Now let's put it into a what you would need to write down. I have 0 to 2. I know it's going to be S squared dx. Now, friends, I've got to figure out this S squared what this is in terms of x, right? Well, golly, how have we done that all yesterday when we were finding the length of a vertical line? What did we do? We did top minus bottom. What is the equation of this top curve? 1 minus x squared over 4. What is the equation of that bottom curve? Is, of course, 0, so I'm not going to bother writing 0. And this is our volume. A lot of times I do volume, I put a little square there so I know what I'm doing. Uh, you don't have to do that, but this is going to be my setup if it's said to set up. Now obviously I want to get a, a correct answer and again we're not going to, I'm not going to make you integrate this stuff by hand, at least in the notes I'm not going to. Um, these end up being pretty uh, complicated, so we're just going to type it in. So math 9, 0 to 2. You've got to put an extra set of parentheses there because you wouldn't be able to square. So your calculator puts a, a set of parentheses. Not that you have to write this, but your calculator puts a parentheses here. You won't be able to square after that parenthesis, so that's why you have to put another set. Another option some people like is they like to type their equation in Y1, so they're just typing in one thing. I'm talking and making sure that I'm uh, typing it in right as I talk. Because you do certainly want to type it in the right way, and I get this. Again, that one, you probably already know the decimal or the fraction, but it depends, again, what part of the piece it's on. I would, of course, accept this. Um, I do like exact answers. If it gives me one, I like that. So those are the same thing. So there you go. So let's, let's keep working and doing these, and you're going to kind of see that I... I do the same process every single time, okay? Let's read it. the next one. The base of a solid is the region between one arc. I don't think that's supposed to have an arch, arc. It's supposed to just be arc. Arc of sine. We'll cross that out. One arc of y equals sine in the x-axis. Each cross-section perpendicular to the x-axis is an equilateral triangle sitting on its base. Find the volume of a solid. Well, let's go through our same, same steps. It says one arc of sine in the x-axis, because obviously that repeats. So I'm just going to draw one of those. Maybe it is arch. I don't know. Um, 
So we have sine. Now let's remember, you're going to have to do a little trig. What, uh, or pre-cal, remember, where, do you remember where the sine curve hits right there? Hopefully you remember that that first, that one arc is at pi. So that's what you know. Now what does it say? Each cross section perpendicular to the x-axis. So I have, again, I never draw mine in the middle, but there's S is an equilateral triangle sitting on its base. So again, what you have to visualize is coming out of the screen and making a triangle, okay? So it's like I'm coming out at you making a triangle here, and I would have a little one here, and I would keep making them, and I would form this shape. Well, once again, okay? I have this S and I'm seeing it on its base. You have this equilateral triangle. It has a thickness to it. Well, I've got to find the volume of that thing. It's going to be the area of the cross section times the thickness. So as I talk about, I go, okay, guys, my, my triangle doesn't look very equilateral, but do you want to have to sit here and go, okay, let me figure out what the area of that triangle would be. That's what we did in the warm up. Because it's me, I don't like geometry. I memorize. And so when I see this equilateral triangle business, I go, oh, that volume is going to be the integral. Remember, this is the area of the cross section. So that's, I like to put my uh, numbers out in front. So it's going to be square root of 3 over 4 times the integral of S squared because that's the area of the cross section. And I'm gonna integrate, and of course, I'm gonna have dx because I know that it is perpendicular to the x-axis. So friends, all I have to do to write my equation, I have square root of three over four. You already know the bounds are zero to pi. I just have to figure out what s is. And what did we say? Well, s is top minus bottom. So what's the equation of that? That's sine of x. And that's my, that's my equation. That's it. I type it in. Like I said, let me show you again. Some people like, because of the parentheses, some people like to type their equation in y. Not that this one is that hard. But I could type sine of x into y1. So when I go to type it in, I have the square root of 3 over 4, math 9, I'm going from 0 to pi, make sure you use pi, not 3.14, so there's a, there's a pi right here, and in this I can do alpha y1 squared, so it just kind of saves on some parentheses there. So that is just another option for you if you like to type it in that way. I hit enter and boom goes the dynamite. That volume is going to be 0 0.680. And I have it. All right, let's keep going. Let's go to the next one. The base is the region in the xy plane bounded by, all right, so this picture is a little more difficult, but again, if we solve for, if we solve for um, y, we would have y equals 4 minus x, that'd be y squared, if I move that y squared over, and I take the square root. So it looks like this. So that picture, I would actually do this guy, very ugly. So it says the base is the region, the xy plane bounded by that and x equals zero. So that's the y axis. So let me erase and just draw the bounded region so as not to confuse you. That's what I have. Boy, that is just very ugly, but that's okay. It's more parabolic, but oh goodness. I'll just draw it again. 
because that perfectionism kills me. So it's going to look like this. My bounded region, here I am at 4, and you have this pretty thing, and that. That looks much better. So I have that bounded region. Okay. Now it still says that the volume of the cross section is perpendicular to the x-axis. So remember, you draw it through the x axis through the uh, bounded region and perpendicular to the correct axis. So through the bounded region, this would be your s all the way through there. So some people like to figure out what S is. You're always going to have to figure it out. So again, I, the, the order that you go in, it doesn't really matter. So, um, you know, but I'll try to follow the same order as I've, I've done in the other problems. Let's look at letter A. Letter A says semicircles with diameters on its base. Okay, with diameters on its base. Do you see that that's like the semicircle one that we did? If you go back here... I'm coming out making semicircles. I'm coming out of that S. And if it, it, if it helps you, I'm coming out kind of three-dimensionally making a, a kind of a semicircle coming up. Kind of looks like a pencil. Um, and I need to know the area of this. And then, of course, I have the thickness, which is the DX. But do I want to actually... Do I want to actually um, figure that out? We already have. We already have. If I go back a page, or two pages rather, over here. Y'all, we've already figured that out. Do you see how the it says the area of a semicircle with base S? So this diameter is your S. We've already figured that out. And that's why I like to memorize because I don't want to have to do that in the problem. It makes the problem faster. So I know that my volume of the semicircle is going to be pi over 8, the integral of s squared. And that's what I write down first. That's the correct area formula. Now let me actually find what I need. Let me start filling in because that's just kind of the, the basic formula. Here's what I've got to do. I know I'm going to get s squared. I know I'm going to be doing dx because, again, perpendicular to the x-axis. Can you tell my bounds right now? Well, yeah, the lowest x in my bounded region is 0, and my highest is 4, so I don't have to solve anything. The hardest part in this is finding what s is. Well, remember that we said when we drew this, we said that those curves are the square root of 4 minus x and negative. So wouldn't the positive one be on top? So this guy, this top curve would be the square root of 4 minus x, and this bottom curve would be negative 4 minus x. So how do we find s if you have a vertical line? Top minus bottom. So I'm going to do the square root of 4 minus x, minus a negative square root of 4 minus x. And what does that give you? That gives you two square roots of 4 minus x. And that, friends, is what you're going to put right here. And remember, do I? can you clean that up? Yes, of course. If you were doing it by hand, you could square that two and bring that out. And, and, and it's really not that hard to do this one by hand, but the point is, when they say set up but do not solve, then just leave it like that. You don't have to clean it up, so don't. And especially if you're on a calculator part, you're going to go to your calculator and you're going to type that in just like it looks there. And for the sake of, I kind of like doing the y equals personally, so I'm going to put my, you know, my S right here, especially when uh, I see that there's parts A, B, and C, because I'll probably have to type it in more than once. So I, I would rather, so I just kind of type my S in. So 2 times the square root of 4 minus X. So again, when I'm, I'm going to type it in, I have pi over 8. times math 9 
I'm going from 0 to 4. Remember, I have that equation, at just that part, not the squared part. So I can type in y1 squared dx, and I get my answer. 12.566. So again, let me, I'm going to move this down just a second. Um, because remember, there are some things, this one wouldn't be too bad to do by hand. So I just want to remind you that if you had to do by hand, when you square, you square both things. So you'd be squaring, that's 4 times 4 minus x dx, and you have pi over 8. I personally would pop that 4 to the outside. So you really have pi over 2 times the integral of 4 minus x dx, and then you can go from there. Um, those things, you can certainly integrate that. Not too bad. You would have 4x minus 1 half x squared from 0 to 4, and you can pop that in. Well, gosh, I've run this far. I might as well keep going, right? So I have 16 minus, what is that? 4 squared minus 8. There you go. So it ends up being a number of 4 pi. Moment of truth here. Looky there. So um, I can do it by hand. Again, it depends what, what portion you're on, calculator, non-calculator, et cetera, et cetera, uh, depending on how you do the answer. All right. I kind of extended through that, that problem. Sorry about that. Do that next one. But I can fit in B. Let's, well, we won't do B by hand, and we've done pretty much all the work, so we can do B right here. So same setup. Rectangles with the height half its base. Friends, think of S with a height half its base. So isn't this one half S? Your first step is choose the right area formula. Wouldn't the area of that cross section be one half S squared? So if I want to write the volume equation, I'm like, okay, it's one half. My bounds are the same, 0 to 4. S is the same, 2 square root of 4 minus x squared dx. And I'm done. Besides typing it in, I'm done. And I will, I think you probably see why I get 16 on that. Because um, I, it's uh, just a little, you can probably kind of see the same thing because this integration would still be, uh, the same, etc. But anyway, uh, you could type it in, you could do it by hand, and you would get it. But do you see how I'm, I'm getting my volume equation? It's the area of the cross section. And so with rectangles, you have to be careful because this one had an S squared in it, but a lot of times if they say a height of 2, the area wouldn't have that, and I think you have it in the homework, so be careful. Sometimes the rectangles don't have an S squared, and all the other ones do, and that tends to be what people mess up on. All right, let's do our last one. Find the volume of a solid whose base is bounded by the graphs of, so let's do that. Okay, so there's x cubed, y equals 0. So that's this, and x equals 2, so that's that. There's my bounded region. Cross sections are perpendicular to the y-axis. So remember, how do I draw S? Perpendicular to the correct axis and through the bounded region, this is going to be your S. Now let's pick out the right formula. Y'all, you see equilateral triangles? We've done this one before. 
What's the correct formula? Square root of 3 over 4, integral of s squared. So that's what I know. Now, this one I have to be careful with. First of all, I'm going to leave some space for me to do some work because I can fill that part out. It's going to be the integral. I know I'm going to have to figure out s squared. Is this going to be a dx or a dy problem? Well, if I draw a couple s's, how are they stacked? They're stacked that way, so this is going to be a dy problem which means my bounds have to be y values. So I'm not going to put 0 to 2. What am I going to put? I am going to put 0. But what is my highest y value? I have to figure out what that y value is right there. It's not 2. How am I going to do that? Well, here's my equation. So don't you agree that that would be the point 2, comma 8? So I put an 8 there. Now, the last thing I have to do is get S. How do we get S if it's, what did we do yesterday when we had a horizontal line? We did right minus left. But remember, if you're doing dy, your equations have to be solved for x. So this line already is, this is x equals 2. But this line I've got to get that to say x equals. So looking at this formula here, are you in agreement that that would be x equals the cube root of y? So if I do right minus left, I get 2 minus the cube root of y. Friends, if you're doing dy, this stuff has to have y's. You can't do x's. So 2 minus the cube root of y. And that is going to be my equation, my setup, but do not solve. If I have to solve it, and I, I think by now you can practice typing in the calculator, so stop the video, try to type it in. Remember, even though I say Y's, I type in X's just so I can hit that button. And you should, well, I'm, I'm just going to double check myself, you know. Let's just, might as well get it in there. I have 2 minus the cube root, let's see, math, there it is, the cube root of x, so I have that in my y equals, so I have, common focus, I don't know if you can hear that announcement, but there you go. So square root of 3 over 4, 0 to 8. I've typed in that S into Y1. So Y1 squared dx. And let's see what we get. Come on, calculator. There we go. 1.386. And that's my volume. So, what are our steps? Okay, what I can't arrow I can't arrow down very much. So, at the bottom of your paper, hopefully you've written that down. Let me erase that. And let's at the bottom of your paper just write this. What are our steps for doing cross sections? Well, first you're going to draw to find bounded region. Draw bounded region and draw S. Okay. You are going to find, write the correct area formula. So again, that's where that sheet, you don't want to have to derive it every time. Man, that takes a long time. But you have to understand because y'all, they can throw things on the AP exam they did, and I'll, I'll talk about one, that it was, it was different. And uh, you have to understand what you're doing. It's the area of the cross-section times, and you're just, the thickness, and you're adding them all up. So yes, I like to memorize those areas of the common ones, equilateral triangle, semicircle, Etc. But you have to understand what you are doing. Um, you're gonna, of course, 
you're going to find bounds and you're going to find your s and then you're going to write the formula So you kind of move through. Remember with, with this, remember with area yesterday, I said technically you can do every problem dx or dy. It's kind of your choice. With this one, you have no choice. If the cross sections are perpendicular to the x-axis, you have to be doing dx. If the cross sections are perpendicular to the y-axis, you're always doing dy. Okay? So work on that and good luck.